So they say that prostitution is the oldest profession in history. In the case that it is a profession because women are paid to do it, all men are paid to do it, then I guess it's right that it is the oldest profession in all history. But I would think that putting the whole payment factor aside, there is one duty or purpose or job which is even older. And that is parenthood, parenting a child, raising a child, you know, helping them develop through infancy and childhood and the teens well into their adulthood so that they can fend for themselves one day and maybe procreate, have their own children and then raise them. But you want to develop them to be the best that they can be so that they are set for the best future that they can afford and that they can earn and deserve. So, you know, a lot of people I think are under the impression that success and a successful life is working a really good career or a prestigious job earning a lot of money and then being able to afford your family you know a really comfortable luxurious lifestyle full of many nice things and holidays and being able to afford your children the best education that money can buy and being able to give them anything they want you know whenever they want it and a lot of parents might think that this satisfies the criteria of being a good parent. I would beg to differ. I would think that there is a lot more important things to focus on in raising a child, such as making sure that they've got the right attitude in life. Because it's all about attitude, how you appreciate life, how you can determine life to be. You know, whether the, the cup is half empty or half full depends entirely on your attitude and your perspective. So I think the focus can go there. Uh, focus on developing a child's sense of virtue over vice. You know what I'm saying? And all those various values that one needs to be a good person and to be able to respect other people, you know, and really win friends and influence people. You know, to raise them to develop the right skill sets and aptitudes and logic and ways of analyzing and teach them how to learn how to learn. You know what I'm saying? Teach them how to learn so that they can keep on growing for themselves and fending for themselves and developing their game further once they're an adult. So I think that's a lot more important than just being able to throw some money and some nice things and a comfortable life and best childcare or whatever. I think at the end of the day, the most important aspect, and since way back before industrialism and before capitalism and this very materialistic life that we have used to replace what what used to be very spiritual. Back in the day in tribal times, you know, tribes would always be together. The children wouldn't be alone. They'd always be with family. Even if it wasn't by blood relation, they'd always be with family. And I think these days, children spend a lot more time by themselves or with people they don't even know. Sometimes more than they do with people they do know and more, more with, they spend more time with people that they even don't like than they do with people they love. And I think that's sad that, you know, statistically, parents only speak to their children, what is it, 20 minutes a week entirely? Or is it 20 minutes or two hours? Either way, if you break it down over a week, it's not much quality time. And taking a child out to the movies every once in a while and sitting there watching a film together is as great as it is and fun as it is, and it's good for bonding. It's not enough, it's not as good as really maybe kicking a ball and talking and having a conversation with your child and talking to them about their feelings and about their thoughts and instead of hushing down their questions like it's they're petty or insignificant or just stupid questions that some child's asking, actually being attentive and taking a child seriously and not looking down to them like they're somehow subordinate because they're smaller and less experienced but looking well, I was going to say, you know, looking up to them. You know what I mean? Because I think children deserve a lot of respect for they are more open in a lot of ways than adults are. Adults are very closed off and concrete generally. And you become more so when you hit towards 50, 60. And then you start opening up again for some. Um, so if anything, children we should look up to, not down at. Because they are more open to perceiving the greater picture and the deeper truths that I think adults often overlook and can miss entirely. 
But really, I think what's more beneficial is to look at a, at a child eye to eye and respect them. Not as a child, you know, but as a, as a little person. You're a big person. You're both just people. Or they're a little adult and you're a bigger adult. You're still a child. If they're a child, you're a child. You're just a bigger child. You know what I'm saying? There's no difference except in development. And sure, with years comes wisdom and knowledge. But it doesn't mean that we should show disrespect or not take seriously and appreciate the significance of predecessors or not predecessors, people below us, subordinates, but people at different levels of education, graduation. You know, there are some older people that, you know, don't even match up to some young people in terms of intelligence, knowledge, wisdom. You know what I'm saying? And it really is relative to experience and the, the person themselves, the individual. So that they, I think that, you know, if I had it my way, I would see that every child receives all the attention and the love that he or she needs from the family, from the parents. Um, that there would be a less focus on trying to replace that and those essential provisions and things with material goods and iPhones and games, television, you know, TV parenting. And I would think if that were to happen, if, if people were to, instead of prioritizing making money, you know what I mean, just like the second oldest profession, people that do that often do, they are willing to sell themselves and subject themselves, which is their choice, and some of them enjoy it, maybe. Maybe. But they are willing to sell themselves, and a lot of them willing to degrade themselves and, and throw away their dignity and show disrespect to their temple night after night. You know, 30 minutes after 30 minutes after 30 minutes just for money. And sometimes it's out of need, necessity. Sometimes they just want to make quick money and they'd rather lay on their back and make 10 times as much money as they would have to make running around on their feet doing a lot more hard work. You know, this is just letting them get hard and then letting them do the work, so to speak. Um, and I think they do that and they subject themselves to that, like I said, for the money. They prioritize that. You know, I would move away from that idea that that's the oldest profession. Parenting is the oldest profession. And the principles that come first in that, you know, isn't about money providing the material needs. I mean, security is part of it and giving gifts is part of it and rewarding your child for their efforts and, and making life fun and comfortable and luxurious. Yeah, that's all great. But if you focus just on making money, then you aren't too far different than the prostitutes just laying in their back. Except you're just doing it very differently, on your feet, a lot of hard work, or on your ass in an office, whatever, maybe it's not so hard work. But either way, if you are sacrificing what is essential and what deserves dignity and respect in order to make a buck, for whatever reason or justification, then you're on par. That's not to say that you're as bad as a prostitute or that they're as bad as a business person or someone that prioritizes money, the money maker. I'm just saying they're the same. And I, would, I would think that parenting should definitely fall into a different scope and way of thinking and scope of values, scope of priorities, scope of motivations. It's not about the money. It's about being there and helping your child become the best person they can become. Helping them learn to learn so that one day they can fend for themselves, start their own family, and on it goes. They can instill all the lessons, all the values, all the colors that you took the time and gave the energy to impart. And really at the end of the day, I think having a good father and a good mother and a good upbringing, it's priceless. Money can't buy that. It's no substitute. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you later.